We were wrong. And you set us straight. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And we have not been living amazing lately. <laughs> um, you may have seen a video that we made a couple weeks ago. You probably have because 200,000 people watched our video in the first week. Yeah, and thank you for that. Thanks for, for watching the video. It, it uh, Even though it was painful to make, um, we got we got a lot out of your comments. So if you haven't seen the video, we'll put a link here. It is about when our bikes got stolen from the campground where we were staying right from our campsite. But we wanted to make this video because this video is about you, the A-team. We always learn from you. We think of you as our family. And like good family members, right? <laughs> you let us know when yeah. we screw up. Yes. And you will let us know <laughs> unequivocally that, that we messed up on this deal. We hear you loud and clear. So what, um, <laughs> what we were taking a lot of heat from and on this video is that after our bikes were stolen, we made a decision not to file a police report and everybody was like, oh my gosh, you need to file a police report. So let's talk about why we didn't. With everything else that happened, with the roof tear and the back of the rig being torn off by me forgetting about tail swing, we had two pretty big insurance claims. We were not going to call the insurance for the bikes. And because of that, we just thought, well, we don't really need a police report. Right, because we felt like if we made an insurance claim on the bikes, that we would get canceled. Yeah. And when my bike got stolen in April 2020, the police were not that helpful. They basically said, well, we'll come file a report just so you can make an insurance claim. You, it's your responsibility to look for the bike, to call pawn shops. And they basically let us know they weren't gonna do anything. So we're like, why call the police? Yeah, it did help for the insurance though, because uh, when we filed the insurance claim, the first thing they asked was, do you have a police report? What we learned from you, <laughs> and we really we really hear you so you know again you know if you didn't hear us in the very beginning you know we now realize we were wrong you guys made three very important points number one there is an, a bike registry mm -hmm. and if we had made that police report then the bikes would be on the registry with their serial numbers and they could possibly be found and number two if it turns out that the people that stole them do this regularly it's like a theft ring and it's uncovered you know our bikes would be recovered and they would know who they belong to and get them back to us and the third big reason to file a police report is that it becomes a crime statistic so it's no longer a hidden thing it's made public that this area that we were in is is an area that has thefts so we did call the police any ideas on who might have taken them? Was there anybody lurking around the area? No, and you know, that was the thing. We had them on the bike rack behind our camper. We have a fifth wheel camper and we were backed into the woods. So if you were walking or driving by, you really wouldn't see them. I mean, you could maybe see a sliver of a tire, but you really couldn't see them. And we, yeah. and it was when we were there, the campground was pretty much half empty. We did not have neighbors yeah. on either side and uh, we never saw anyone but cars that we recognized that were other campers. We never saw like a yeah. car from some other place. Well, they had a rash of thefts out there. I think it was year before last. They oh. had a rash of thefts out there. They had bikes, they had a cooler. One of those really expensive coolers was stolen and then uh, they had several different instances. So I, I'm wondering if somebody local is going in there on foot at night while people are sleeping. We did file a report and it actually made us feel better because the cop was very helpful. The good news is, is if these bikes turn up somewhere, they're going to be pretty distinct. I think so. Um, the bad news is there's no telling whether they're actually going to turn up somewhere or not. Yeah. Not, like I said, I've responded to several thefts out there a couple of years ago. We were never able to establish a suspect. Within a day, we heard back from the officer that he had checked the local pawn shops. And, you know, this happened in Newport, Washington. If you don't know, he had already checked the Spokane ones. And then... He was going to put it out to other police departments and see if they had uh, 
it found any bicycles. And we sent a couple of good pictures of the bikes to them. And, and uh, He actually made us feel good because he said the bikes are distinctive. He has a he, f- he has a good feeling that he will find these bikes. Yeah, there's so. a good chance. He thinks there's a good chance that they might get reco- they might be recovered. We would not have filed their police report if it wasn't for you. So thank you for setting us straight. Thank you for being our family on the road. Yeah, it was uh, you. You really did get us pointed in the right directions. We're going to be traveling east, and we're going to do a bunch of car museums for me. And, <laughs> and uh, I was telling Liz yesterday, I said, yeah, I'd like to film some of these museum visits. And she said, well, you can start your own channel. <laughs> so so right. tell me, so tell us in the comments if, if you would like to see, uh, you know, a walkthrough of the Studebaker Museum, the Auburn Cord du- Duesenberg Museum, <laughs> the Corvette Museum. I mean, the Corvette are, Museum might be good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Studebaker is better than Corvette. So. <laughs> so. At least it, mm. it's, it has more history than the Corvette. We still love RV life. I've said this before, but this lifestyle was not even on my radar three years ago. Well, three and a half years ago. It's a long story I won't get into here, but, but I kind of came out as a, to get away from a bad situation. and Involving women. Invo- <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, I was only thinking about you know, doing it temporary until I found a place to settle. The longer I was out here, the more it was like, wow, this is, this is really a nice lifestyle. There's definitely some freedom that, you know, not having to be tied down to your house. Think of all the hours you spent, you know, working on your house, cleaning your house, that kind of thing. You know, there's just so much freedom being out here. Mm-hmm. And if you are thinking about RV life, we definitely have lots of videos to, talking about that. Just know that if you are a hands-on guy like I was at, in my sticks and bricks house. I had a, a garage that I worked on, built cars and, and fixed cars. And uh, I do miss that some. I mean, there is, there is a part of me that, that I left behind that I can't do on the road. I mean, I get to do, I'm doing, we're installing solar right now, so, so that's a project that I'm kind of get sinking my teeth into. If you're a hands-on guy, you will miss it, I think. But there's definitely lots of things you can do in the RV. And speaking to women, you know, if you're really what they call house proud and you're really into having a house and entertaining, just the way I look at it is, well, that was a chapter in my life. Now I'm on to my next chapter, which is more about experiences, living life. I honestly feel that I have never lived life more than I have these last three years being on the road where I'm seeing and doing and experiencing. And the best part of this life is meeting you. We meet so many wonderful RVers on we, the road. We really do. We, in fact, we, when we pulled into the, par- the campground that we're in right now, we, were, we pulled up to the gate and, and some people came up within a few seconds actually. They were on their way out, and then they turned around and and stopped to say hi, and that yeah. just made us feel so it good. It really is. I mean, it and it's happening more and more um, as more of you come on to the channel. Mm-hmm. You're you're meeting us out here in the in the world, and and it's great. We love we love meeting you. And if you want to know exactly where we are, and you want some inside information, we have a Patreon page for those of you that want to connect more and share pictures. Just join us over there. And thanks for watching and especially thanks for commenting. We will see you in the next video. This, this is just, I, I'm in love. This is a 1956 Saab Sonnet 1. They built six of them total. And 